G'day, welcome to Matt's workshop. I've had this 80 watt red and black Chinese laser for a couple of months now. I've already made a few upgrades to it, as you may have seen in my previous videos. So I want to review how I find the machine, uh, how it performs, but mainly focus on things that I believe need improvement and that I want to change about the machine. I'll start by saying that for the price of this machine, which is approximately 3000 Australian dollars, it performs well right out of the box, with all the budget accessories that it came with. If you've seen um, the unboxing video that I made when the machine arrived, you'll see it came with an aquarium pump, a water pump, an exhaust air blower and hoses, and a small air pump. Now after using this machine for a couple of months now, I'll say that I've not had any issues with any of those accessories, the pumps or the fans. They do what they're designed to do and it'll be okay if I'm going to just keep using that machine for a couple of hours a week. But I've gotten busy with projects and making um, stuff for retail, which you can see some of those on my website at www.mattsworkshop.net. And now that has led me to start picking up things that I really don't like and would like to change about this machine to make it better. Over the past few months I've been paying more attention to the power and the speed settings that I use when cutting materials so that one, I don't overburn the material and two, that I don't actually overpower the laser tube more than it really needs to to do a cut. So I think the machine's got a lot to offer but there's also quite a few things that can be improved on. These are the things I'm going to discuss now and that is going through some of the things that I'd like to change on the machine or have already started to change on the machine to make it uh, better to use. So firstly the laser controller that came with the machine was a Top Wisdom 410C. Uh, this was controlled by Auto Laser Software. It was very limiting, not the easiest controller or software to use and I've already made the upgrade as you can see on my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I've upgraded to this Ruida RDC 6445. This being a great improvement and worth every dollar spent. The other thing that uh, I don't like about the machine when it came was it had no gauges. So I've rectified that with installing an amp meter as well as a temperature gauge. The amp meter, um, you had no idea to know what sort of milliamps the laser tube was outputting. So that's um, been fixed by using this amp meter that ranges from zero to 30 milliamps and that's the best uh, gauge scale to use, uh, the lower end of the scale because most of the time you will be cutting at the most on an 80 watt laser up to approximately uh, 25 to 28 millimeter, milliamps is the absolute, absolute max. Um, I'm now getting extremely good cuts between the 10 and the 20 milliamp range um, so it's been a great addition to have that milliamp meter. Like I said, the installation of this meter has allowed me to refine my cuts um, and I mentioned that the good thing here is that you can see what the power is doing. It's nice to say that I cut at 50% power on an 80 watt laser but what really matters I found is to pay attention to how many milliamps are needed to make a cut in a piece of material. Uh, this can also be referred to later on when you start to notice that 50% isn't cutting like it used to. You can see if the milliamps have reduced um, that also would indicate then a weakening of the power in the tube which could indicate to you that you need to place an order for a replacement laser tube in the near future. The next thing I want to talk about was briefly the water cooling in this unit. Um, the water cooling that came with the machine was the aquarium pump uh, submerged in a large bucket of water, a volume of water. I'm using this esky as you can see and um, using uh, frozen water bottles from the freezer just over here and constantly changing those water bottles to keep the water temperature at the optimal for keeping the laser cool. The problem is it doesn't come with a water flow sensor. I've got to manually keep an eye on the temperature, regularly change those bottles, all at the same time while keep an eye on the job. So to fix this problem, I have a SNA CW5200 chiller, water chiller, coming from uh, Cloud Ray Laser in China. And I'll be doing a uh, video on this when it arrives, an unboxing video, so stay tuned for that. But uh, the benefit of the water chiller is that it is refrigerated, so it will keep the water at a constant temperature. 
It has a flow sensor uh, and an alert if the water flow stops. Uh, but also, I won't have to keep changing water. I can concentrate on the job that's actually being cut rather than also concentrating on whether my laser tube is getting too hot. So if you have the funds, I recommend a water cooler of some kind. Don't just rely on this aquarium pump and water system that is shipped with the machine. So that is one downfall, I suppose. This machine was not shipped with an efficient water chiller. So the next thing that I don't like about the machine um, that needed to be changed is the lighting. This fluorescent tube came installed in the machine. The problem with it is that it casts a shadow over the workpiece. You see if I move the laser head backwards and forwards I'm getting this shadow or dark section down here. So if I'm trying to line up a piece of material I get this horrible shadowing which is really hard to see. To fix that problem I've installed some LED strip lights. It makes it so much easier. I don't get the shadow casting on the piece. Basically the strip lights are running around all four sides. There was a spare switch here. Uh, it said standby switch. Nothing was attached. So I've wired up my strip lights just to utilize that switch. So that's just a small improvement I made. I didn't feel like I needed to make a video on that, but yeah, you may want to do something similar with your own machines. All right, I can't really move on without complaining about this red dot. Anyone that has one of these knows that this bracket is in a terrible position. It knocks, it gets in the way. If the laser beam is out of focus, as in the height is out of focus, the red dot will move away from the actual laser firing position. It's basic geometry and, and, and angles. This pointing down on an angle, if we've got a lower, it's going to move. So it can't be relied on for accuracy. So to fix this problem, I'm going to upgrade it to what they call a laser or an LED laser combiner. This unit comes from Cloudray Laser and it's on its way, so stay tuned for that. Basically what it's going to do is have a LED red dot and the laser beam combined at the mirror number one so that the laser beam will fire and actually come along at the same location through where the laser beam fires and will project out the bottom of the nozzle. So that would eliminate this, the red dot will come through the nozzle and all the way through from uh, the first mirror. So stay tuned, I'm going to do an upgrade video on when I get those parts in. Hopefully they're going to be here soon because that's something that I'd like to get rid of is this whole setup here. Talking about videos that are going to be uploaded, if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, click the subscribe button below and also press the notification bell and then you'll be notified when I uh, release these new videos and um, it'll be great to uh, have hear any comments or suggestions of videos that you'd like so you can always leave comments in any of my videos below happy to provide feedback also happy to get feedback moving on looking at the air supply I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to tackle this one I like the current air pump it's quiet and I live in a neighborhood where the homes are close together but there's some jobs where I know I'd get better results with a larger but more noisy air compressor. So I'm not an engineer but I was considering a pump of a similar size to this one here and then running them together so I'm hoping that that would increase airflow. If there's any engineers out there that can tell me whether this is a good idea or a bad idea so just use two quiet air pumps delivering roughly seven liters per minute. Will that give me better results without the need for a bigger air compressor. Um, I'll have to put some more research and thought into that one. But yeah, the air pump I don't find is sufficient for every job that I want to do. The next thing um, is the air assist. At the moment I've found that uh, doing jobs are cleaner without air assist. For example, if I compare engraving jobs on acrylic or trolleys, the air does not force the smoke and the debris um, and the fumes back onto the board and make it stick. I've got an example here. Uh, one here with the 
air assist on and one with the air assist off and you can see that the one that has the air assist off has the smoke uh, going away from it whereas the one with the air assist on has all those fumes and, and pieces forced back onto the board making them stick. But to cut I need air assist on otherwise there's a huge fire risk as the fumes are burnt by the laser and the air's not forcing those fumes away. Without air assist on some materials then we get that flame tailing the laser and it's a big safety issue if you're not there to watch every cut uh, can only take a uh, split concentration lapse and a fire could consume the product and also damage the machine. Now there are parameters there are parameters on the um, on the software as well as the controller that say air assist on and air assist off. The issue with this machine is, is that those parameters don't turn my air on and off. I have to manually turn them on with a switch. Uh, that's a power switch that I have down the side. I turn the air on when I need it, I turn it off when I need it. By selecting those options in the software doesn't change anything for me, so I have to manually do that. So the plan is uh, to resolve this problem. The plan is to upgrade the air control and also while I'm doing that incorporate another product from Cloudray which is called Ultimate Air Assist. So I'm hoping that once this is set up correctly this will give me more control on how and when the air is used as well as always providing a small airflow to protect the lens and the surrounding components but not enough airflow when it's not needed to cause the smoke and debris to be forced back onto the finished product. So we'll have a look at that when the, uh, the components arrive. So yes, I've got more parts coming from Cloudray Laser and I um, hope to be doing a video on each of those. So more of these in an upcoming video. Briefly, the other thing I want to talk about was the exhaust. Um, now, this exhaust fan that came with the machine, I'll turn it on now, it, it's quite loud. And I like to keep the noise to a minimum. So I've done a bit of research and found that an exhaust fan, um, there's an exhaust fan that claims to be half the decibel level of this current one. So I measured this one at roughly 60 to, uh, sorry, 68 to 70 uh, decibels sitting from where I am, that's uh, roughly two, two meters away. So I'm hoping that this new one that's uh, claiming to be about 30 to 35 decibels, um, I hope to have that upgrade in the near future. I may do a short video, but it's, it's nothing spectacular. I may just mention it in one of my videos. The other thing I want to talk about was the z-axis or the, the the bed lift so currently uh, the setup works by using these two buttons up here which raise and lower uh, the uh, the bed so if I want to bring the uh, laser up I press up and the bed up up and obviously down for down and that allows me to focus the thing is on my controller I have z up and z down now these buttons won't work because the system is designed without a uh, z-axis driver or a suitable stepper motor. I've been doing some research into this and I've also consulted Cloudbrake Laser who've suggested a few options, one of which I hope to be purchasing soon and installing a new motor and z-axis driver which then connects to this Ruida controller which will allow me to control the bed height from the control panel here. So why do I want this? If I've got two buttons on the side, why do I need to use this? Is it just lazy? Well, there's another button here called focus. Now that focus button won't work with this current setup because it's got a manual up and down button. If the controller was able to control the Z up and the Z down, then by installing an autofocus system on this machine, I'll be able to use the focus. So basically now I've got a more advanced controller, but I need to bring the machine up to spec in order to have full control over the work that I'm doing from the control panel.
So I use different uh, materials, different support methods. I could use this honeycomb table. I use risers with these uh, magnets. Um, so I could focus the machine down here, but I'd like to have an autofocus because I'm changing between different material thicknesses and different materials quite regularly, especially with this retail business uh, that I've uh, started. So part of that will also involve another part that um, I found at Cloudray Laser. Uh, that's called autofocus so that's also on its way and um, can't actually install that until I buy the other components which I haven't purchased yet so I'll purchase the uh, Z up and down components and the new Z driver because the machine doesn't have a Z driver um, that would uh, then allow me to do all that other stuff so yeah that's just a little it's not a, a flaw with the machine it's just the way the machine was designed you can't use these buttons and those buttons at the same time. And the last thing that uh, I'd like to review on this machine is this honeycomb bed. Now, on my machine, this honeycomb bed is permanently fixed. It's great for airflow, but the material residue that um, is on there is really starting to smell. Um, I've cleaned it quite a bit. Really doesn't clean up very well at all. Uh, when cutting small objects, they often fall through and get lost in the, uh, the multitude of little offcuts that are underneath. So if I'm doing a job where there's an important piece that is small that falls through, I need to make sure beforehand that I clean underneath it so that when the part falls through, it's easy to find without sorting through the hundreds of little bits down there. So that honeycomb bed, like I said, is permanently mounted. Now I can remove it by removing a few screws and it sits on a, uh, a bed, um, an open bed. So what I hope to do in the future will be remove that honeycomb bed and have different options uh, of a flatbed steel uh, and maybe even some blades that don't hold, a, that are easy to clean and um, don't hold all that residue. So just some, uh, some blades in a 90, de 90 degree or square uh, grid pattern. Um, I use that. I've also got uh, these risers which are just neo, uh, neo magnets which I just can um, keep the pieces nice and level but uh, to be able to remove that honeycomb bed and give it a good clean but also have options where I've got a flat bed or the blades is something that um, it's not going to happen overnight but it's something that I'd like to do to this machine and um, being permanently fixed in there just find it a little bit restrictive. I would like to try different mounting options for supporting the uh, materials that I'm cutting. So that's going to require a bit of uh, engineering, I think, and that's a project maybe for well later in the year. Well, thanks for visiting Matt's workshop. That's all from me today. Uh, stay tuned for more video of uh, these upgrades that I'm going to be doing on the machine. Uh, and these improvements are going to be doing in the near future. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, press the subscribe button, press notification bell on if you want to be notified when I upload these new videos. And you can also follow me on Facebook at uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Matt's Workshop AU. Before you go, I'd like to add that although I use uh, Cloudray Laser uh, and their components for my machine, and I've mentioned them a bit in this video, this video does not include any paid sponsorship from Cloudray Laser. I have found their products and their service and support to be exceptional and that's why I'm using their products. I have included a URL uh, to Cloudray Laser's website in the description below. So if you're interested in any of these components that I've mentioned, you can find them there on their website. For open and full disclosure though, I would like to uh, just mention that future videos may include some products sent to me by Cloudray Laser for me to test and to review. Now the opinions of uh, those um, products and how they perform and um, how they function will be the opinions of my own and not of Cloudray Laser. So thanks for your time and thanks for watching. Cheers.